Hey guys and gals, I got another one for you today. Today I'm in my Object 140 on our dens, and I'm gonna speed some of this up because I have a couple games here to show you. All right, so our dens is one of my least favorite maps, uh, mostly because the zero line gets camped so hard from both sides. But nonetheless, it's not like I can take it out of rotation. So I like to play the one through four line. Um, I also like to help the city if I can. And it just doesn't feel like we have a lot of people in the city, so I push all the way out to the four line. Try to get a snapshot into a purging, and I just cannot fit it in there, so then I aim my shot and get a pen. And I'm looking to see who's shooting at me, because I'm trying to back up the IS-7 bumps. And then I take a shell. I don't really blame him for it, I kind of backed up all awkwardly, so whatever. It's hard to game. Now if he like held me out there, it'd be a different story, but it looked like an innocent bump. Plus, like I said, I was backing up all one angle, then I moved over to the other. This Object 140 is using this ridge line pretty well. Of course, I don't snapshot him either. And he didn't snap me the first shot, but now he's like really hauled out. I don't play the Object 140 a lot, so um, I don't. I'm not used to the feel of the gun handling and. Um, Staying hull down. Like that guy looks like a really good 140 player. He knows how to use the undulations in the map and just stay hull down. So he can beat me in hull down, but can he beat me straight up? He starts with more hit points. We shoot each other there. Okay. Shot into his track, but I don't track it. And, I'm sorry buddy, but you get to go back to the garage, and then he turns his side to me to make it really easy. I tried to make sure I went for a tracking shot, just in case that I didn't pet him. I at least would have locked him in place for my teammate around this corner, and there's a four waiting for me. Alright. <clears throat> so yes. Not very exciting stuff. But it's, I decide to stay and watch the game. And I got the IS-7 that went with me that gave me that little accidental bump. And he is fighting hard. So, one thing I do is I look over at Artie and I figure out which way he's looking. And he's looking at the zero line. So, this IS-7 is all but screwed. 1390 puts three shells up his butt. loses his atomic. He gets a shell into that conquer. The super conquer, I should say. And then it, he bounces off the super conquer and the 1390 has enough time to reload and shoot him again. So to me I'm thinking at this point. I thought we were gonna lose, okay, I'll be honest. But now when I look at the map, it looks like we might be able to pull it off. However, then all of a sudden over the radio comes, hey, help me, I'm stuck. And I come over to these guys and it's pretty funny. They get the uh, 705A off the dead tank and then there's a conquer on top of him. So we have like a super tank on our team. Oh, well that was, that didn't last long. All right, enough screwing around, back to the battle. We got some pretty healthy tanks, and we got a two tank advantage on them, and we have Artie, so uh, I feel like we should be able to pull this down. There's a 50 TP on their team that's fighting our Carnarvon. And our Carnarvon tries to get back into cover, and ends up getting killed by the 50 TP. I think he should have probably just tracked the 50 TP and then went for cover, or alternatively, since he doesn't track the 50 TP, he should just uh, face hug him and uh, maybe wiggle. Tough call, if you don't get him tracked, it's going to be tough not to get killed by him. Alright, so they got one on cap, and they have just 
taking the lead. Our E3 is fighting Super Conqueror, and now the 1390 shows up, so chances are that E3 is going to be toast. Two against one when you're in an E3 is not very good, especially when one of them is a scout tank. But hold on home. So I switched to the Waffle, and it's interesting because he has no health, so he kind of has to make this play of flanking, but I'm just worried that he's not going to make it around in time to be able to do so. And sure enough, comes around, and right as he kills the 50 TP, or the CDC, I'm sorry, the 50 TP also dies. Alright, so then the 1390 shows up and starts shooting our super conk in the butt. And they're trying to decide what to do. And they switch to getting to the base. And I think that's a good idea. But what? Our E3 is still almost full health. So the 1390 didn't help the super cocker out. <sighs> Excuse me. And now that leads to the super conqueror dying. So great stuff. E3 pulls it down. Now this feels like some sloppy play back on both sides or just some choices that certain tanks made that could have shifted the battle, right? Doesn't feel like it was coordinated really that well as a team or as clunky, uh, whatever you want to call it. So they have a T32 over here. The T-32 kills our Super Conqueror, tying it up 2v2. This guy doesn't even aim his sh shot, and he misses the T-32. That's okay, because the T-32 is going to struggle with him. He's going to come over here. The T-32 is going to go try to uh, face hug him, and I think that's a pretty good idea. The T-32's got strong enough turret armor where this guy might not be able to pen him. And especially since he already auto locked once, he might be able to block his shot. So 1390 starts to circle him, and this 705A does not lead him very well. And it, you see at every shell the 1390 actually pens, he takes a module off of this guy. So this guy is not a happy camper. <clears throat> And now I'm getting worried again. Now I'm getting worried again that we might not do this. So let's switch back to the E3. And honestly, I feel like as long as these two stick together, they have the tiebreaker. So as long as they stick together, we're good to go. But I haven't watched this E3 the whole game, so we don't know how good this guy actually is. But to deal with a scout by yourself in the E3, is usually a losing battle unless the E3 makes like a vital mistake. So it's a waiting game here. And if you notice, a scout pops up just like at the right times. Or it seems like he disappears for a while and then he reappears in certain locations. So you can see he pops up in H0 there and doesn't really do anything. I think he's just gauging where our teammates are. I'm going to fast forward again. And I was thinking about showing you this in real time just because uh, it really shows like how <clears throat> methodical the scout is and how long he takes to up here and reappear and he drives by the E4 which missed and then he drives into the 705A which misses and he lights the 705A on fire and then he kills him so before I show you the ending we're gonna take a look at his gameplay and once again I have it fast forwarded and I'll be real honest guys this gameplay is actually pretty boring um, but he's a three stripe 1390. So if you're interested in marks of excellence, 
kind of take notes on how this guy plays his 1390. He's very methodical. He takes his time. He doesn't seem to panic in any situation. And he also doesn't throw his hit points away. So you can see he hasn't even... So the interesting thing is that he plays his 1390 on smaller maps like a support tank. And the 1390 succeeds at that because it's got the burst potential. Or support slash flanker, right? So... Like when my teammates aren't looking at him... He's going to be able to put shots in, um, but as soon as he's spotted, he's just going to safely assume that people are going to shoot at him because he's an easy pen. Um, so he doesn't put himself in precarious positions. He's looking for another shot on, on us. I remember to say that backwards. And he really doesn't want to expose a lot of his tank, right? So he's just going hull down here. Not that his turret has a lot of armor, but you can see he isn't a very big target when he is hull down. Okay, so he's going on reload. We still have our IS-7 and our Atomic left. They're doing a pretty good job staying alive here. And this is where I was looking at Artie and just hoping that Artie was going to help this side out because if Artie could have hit some of these guys in the open field, probably would have helped us out. I'm not sure what exactly, if he hit anything on the zero line, but at this point I felt like if the, he didn't look this way, he was going to be dead. So. So you see the 1390 doesn't want to drive down the corridor with an IS-7 looking at him. He just takes the time to come around. He's fast enough. He's going to flank the IS-7. He's going to get three rounds. Misses the first shot. Gets the second shot. Gets his third shot. Now he's going on reload. No, 1390 has four shells, not three shells, which I think I just made it sound like that. Uh, the 105 actually has three shells, but the 90 has four. He's loaded up, and he's going to look for the final kill shot on this guy. He's going to aim his shot, shot him down. And he says, falling back, defend the base. Now, this is where my teammates are helping the 705A that's stuck. And... It's safe for him to assume that they're going up towards the cap, um, but they actually are going south, so... He's going to play it pretty safe and try to spot them from a distance. He's not just going to run in there with his head cut off. He hasn't spotted anything yet, so I'm guessing he's thinking that they didn't come back here. So now he's going to switch gears and start heading back towards the four line. Um, and really his goal, I think, here was just to get on top of the hill and get vision to see if there's anything coming from the city, which was a good idea because he spotted an E3. So our Super Conqueror, it's going to engage our E3 at this point. You can hear the caps going off. No, that's not his cap, that's our cap. It's just when we watch replay on the opponent, you still get the audio from your cap if they are capping. Alright, so he sneaks over here. You see he stopped. Like, when he starts to crest the ridgeline, you can see he slows down, and that's because he's just checking to see what can see him, what he can see, are they looking this way. Um, just very tactical. And it's easy to see why this guy has three stripes on his barrel. He has given up no hit points. And now, it looks like he decides to get out of that position, and I'm guessing it's because he thinks that 
he's gonna get my team turned around. Like they're gonna follow him. He's looking for the E3. And he finds a waffle. One just a nice little treat for him. Shuts down the waffle that was on a sliver. The T32 kills the Conquer. 705A shoots, but he decides not to get behind him at this point. I think it was because he was going for a reload. He might have only had one shell left. Our 705A takes the T32. <coughs> And now he decides to go up there. Now, I don't want to critique a three-stripe 1390 player that's doing a fantastic job right now, but I felt like he kind of let his T32 down, um, and he could have been in a better position. Because if that 705A actually aims and lands a shot, then he's going to be a hurting unit. Um, not to mention he might lose a module or a motor or something. Um, and then make it more difficult. This guy seems to have a pretty good grasp on what this tank's capable of, so, like I said, I'm not going to be too critical on that. Uh, he did what he had to do. And now you can see it. he makes a play to go all the way around the map here. This is just to get the surprise on it. So, you're fighting a pretty much full health E3, which is a forward-facing tank destroyer, and you know if you can get behind him, you probably can do some good work, but if he puts you in a corridor, it's going to be tough to dig him out. Not to mention he has a 705A with him. That's on a sliver, but is not the easiest tank to pen. So as he comes up onto this ridge, he's targeted spotted so he's just gonna sneak back down the e3 misses his shot it looks like he's thinking about going over there um, does he want to stay here and disappear sure enough he disappears and that's really just to plant the seed of doubt uh, let to not let our team know where he's gonna go so as soon as he's unspotted his sixth sense goes away he's going to make another play down the middle of the map but he's running out of time, and I think he knows it, so he has to try to at least kill the 705A, and then he'll be able to deal with the E3 later. E3 misses his shot, and he was aimed there, so that's kind of frustrating. The 705, rather than making it a close quarter combat, shoots his shell. And guys, in that situation, you know the, the 1390 has to come get you, so at least take your time to land your shot and for god's sakes put yourself up against a big rock so he can't just drive around in a circle now this e3 is all but stuck but it's pretty impressive uh to watch the ending on how this guy handles our e3 yeah spoiler alert our e3 does not kill this guy Okay, so he tracks him, E3's got a repair kit, fixes the track, 1390's got to go for a reload. So the E3's actually, to me, in a pretty decent spot there, he's got rocks beside him. He's also got the hill, but this 1390 is going to play it just right, so... He's going to have the intimidation factor of being above the E3, so the E3 is going to stare up here just in case the 1390 jumps off the hill. And that allows him to come around the side. He bounces his first shot, second shot, he shoots into the engine deck and he gets a fire. And then the third shot, he tries to track the 1390. And I believe he went on reload here, but I'm not 100% sure. And one of the things you'll find out in the French Scouts is if you get to end game on a carry like this, you start to run out of ammunition, but this guy's done a fantastic job. He's still got 14 shells. So whereas a lot of people would have probably just thrown their 1390 away, um, this you can see how important it is not to give up. Um, 
you never know what type of pet players you're playing against. And if you're just methodical and you think through the situations. So, <clears throat> the E3 turned to the left a little bit, and that allowed him to jump down the hill and swing around behind him, and the E3 couldn't even turn fast enough. So, in my opinion, the E3 should have put himself up against the rock, and if the 1390 slides down the hill, I mean, maybe he can scrape off the rock to get turned around. So he compiles 4,500 damage, 4 kills, nice result, and he shot 28 times, hit 27 targets, only pen 20 of them. All right, guys, it's time for the drawing. This is my daughter, Mary. Hello, go subscribe to Morphkin. <laughs> really? Yep. Okay, well, her and her friends started a YouTube channel. They have one video. It is kind of funny, so we if you want to subscribe. 50-something views, 61 views, and 12 subscribers. You gotta start somewhere. <laughs> All right. Can we stand, like, right back here? Oh, you look so short. You can stand up there and I'll stand back here. Alright. <clears throat> so, seven of you watched the whole video. Thank you. Appreciate that. Or, I mean, maybe more did and you guys just didn't want a Scorpion G. But, uh, I'm going to give one of the seven that commented in the previous video that I made. And now Mary is going to pick one of you tankers to get a Scorpion G. Welcome to Wisconsin, by the way. Beautiful summer day. Spring. Okay, the lucky winner is <laughs> spring. Mighty X Y T. Okay, congratulations, you won a Scorpion G. 